Have you ever wanted to use math to create art? Well, too bad, because I'm gonna show you anyways. I'm terrible at math, which is probably how Josh gets away with not paying me enough every week. Luckily, you don't have to be a math wizard to create this awesome grid of moving shapes and after effects. What's up everyone, it's Jordan Berton with Sonduck Film. Don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is create a new composition. We'll name this composition Main Grid, and we want to make this comp 1650 by 900, then click OK. Next, we'll go to Layer, New, Solid, make the solid completely black, then click OK. We'll use this as a background layer. Now, we're going to create another new composition. We'll name this one Shape 1, make it 150 by 150, then click OK. The reason we made the grid comp that size is because our 150 by 150 shapes will fit into it perfectly to make our grid. The first shape we'll make is a basic circle, so go to the ellipse tool, set fill to solid color, make the color white, set stroke to none, then hold shift and control, then click and drag to make a circle that fills most of the comp. Hold the control key, double click the pan behind tool to center the anchor point, then use the align tab to center the circle in the middle of the composition. Go back to the main grid composition, take the shape one layer we just made, then drag it in and use the Align tab to align left, then align to top so that it's exactly in the top left corner. Now we're going to need to do a bit of math. Duplicate the shape pre-comp, press P for position, then we want to increase the Y value of the duplicate's position by 150 to move it down by one space on our grid, so that should be 225. Then we'll repeat this process. Duplicate the shape, Increase by 150, which this time should be 375, duplicate again, 525, duplicate, 675, duplicate, 825. And you can see since our math is right, the shapes fit perfectly into our composition vertically. Next we'll fill out the rest of our grid by highlighting all the shape layers we made so far, duplicating them, then we're going to increase their X position by 150 but this time you need to click and drag to increase the value. If you type in the value with all the shapes selected, it will also change their Y value, which will break the grid. I'm going to fast forward while I duplicate and move these rows of shapes until I have a fully filled out grid of circles. Lastly, I'll back out into our main composition, drag and drop our main grid comp onto the timeline, and your composition should look something like this. Now that our grid has been set up, we can start adding new shapes to create some variety. An important thing to remember before I start creating these shapes is that you don't have to copy the exact shapes that I make. Feel free to get creative here and make your own unique shapes to fill out your composition. To make a new shape, what we'll do is highlight shape one in the project panel, duplicate it, open up shape two, and now we can make our next shape. For this one, all I'll do is highlight the circle layer, set the fill to none, stroke to solid color, and stroke width to 10, so then now we have a ring like this. Now duplicate shape 2, open shape 3, for this one we'll delete the circle, select the rectangle tool, keep these settings, create a nice square that fills out the comp, then center the anchor point and align it to the middle like usual. Next duplicate shape 3, open shape 4, we'll do the same thing we did with the circles, highlight the square, set the fill to solid color, and stroke to none. Duplicate shape 4, open shape 5, highlight the square, go up to effect, transition, venetian blinds, set the transition completion to 50% and direction to 45 degrees to make this striped square. Duplicate shape 5, open shape 6, delete the square, select the ellipse tool, create a small circle in the top left of the comp, center the anchor point, open the shape layer and select add repeater. Open repeater 1, Set the copies to 5, open transform, and decrease the x value of the position until the 5 dots fill the composition like this. Now add another repeater, open repeater 2, set the copies to 5 again, open transform, set the x value of position to 0, increase the y value until the dots fully fill out the composition, then adjust the first dots position to center the whole shape. Duplicate shape 6 one more time, open shape 7, Delete the shape layer, select the text tool, type the letter X, center the anchor point, align the X, 
Then use the Character tab to resize and recolor the X as needed. We have a good variety of shapes now, so next we can do the fun part. Go back to our main grid comp, and what we can start doing is click on a circle on the grid, then hold down the Alt key and drag one of the other shape comps onto the composition and it should replace the circle that you highlighted. Repeat this process of clicking shapes, then holding the Alt key and dragging our other shapes we made onto the composition to keep replacing the circles until you've filled out the grid with a nice variety of shapes. And once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Before we continue, you probably know that making motion graphics can sometimes be difficult and time consuming. So to fix that problem, we've made thousands of templates to help you save time and produce awesome work under one single subscription price. You can easily preview templates from any of our packs just like our motion graphics advanced pack here and just click apply. Then you can easily modify the parameters of the template and you're done. So if you're looking to get some assistance in advancing your business or career, check out every template we have with our links below. Now we're going to animate a few of our shapes to add some movement to the composition. I'll start with shape 2, open the shape layer, open ellipse 1, stroke 1, set a keyframe for stroke width, move forward a bit on the timeline, decrease the stroke width by a bit, highlight the keyframes and press F9 to make them easy ease. Hold down the alt key, click the stopwatch for stroke width, then type in loop out, parentheses, quotations, ping pong so that the stroke width wiggles back and forth. Next, we'll go to shape 3, duplicate the shape layer, set the fill of the duplicate to solid color, press T for opacity, set a keyframe, move forward a few frames, and set another keyframe. Move forward one frame, set opacity to 0%, move forward a few frames again, and then set one more keyframe. I'll click the stopwatch for opacity and type in the same loop out ping pong expression as the last shape. Now we have this flashing square animation. Lastly, we'll go to the X shape, set a keyframe for rotation, move forward a few times, set another keyframe, move forward one frame, set rotation to 90 degrees, move forward a few more frames, and then set one last keyframe. Add the same loop out expression again, and now the X will flip its rotation back and forth like this. Now, when we go back to our main composition, we have a bunch of movement with our different shapes being animated now. Lastly, we'll use the motion tile effect and masks to finish off our composition and get this cool effect. In our main composition, highlight the main grid pre-comp, go up to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile, set the output width and height to 400, and Alt-click the stopwatch for Tile Center. In the Expression Controls panel, type in Open Bracket, time asterisk negative 100 comma value open bracket one close bracket close bracket this expression will make it so that just the x value will continuously animate for the duration of the composition and make everything move horizontally next go to layer new adjustment layer set the adjustment layer to continuously rasterize go up to effect channel invert then press S for scale and scale up the adjustment layer to be much bigger than the composition. Keep the adjustment layer highlighted, select the rectangle tool, click and drag to create a really big mask that goes horizontally through the middle of the composition. Now half the grid should be inverted like this. Highlight both layers, make them 3D layers, press R for rotation, set their X rotation to negative 53, Z rotation to negative 32, then you might have to adjust the position of the adjustment layer a bit to put it back in the middle like this. Now go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, and Effect, Color Correction, Tint. Set the amount of noise to 25%, uncheck Use Color Noise, and for Tint you can use this effect to change the colors of the composition to whatever you want. I'm going to leave mine black and white, but I just wanted to show you this technique. Lastly, if you want to add a title to the composition, you'll notice that it's almost unreadable. To fix this, go to Layer, New, Solid, set the color to black, and click OK. Put the black solid underneath of the title layer, then lower its opacity a bit, and the text will become readable. And we're done! A cool dynamic grid of shapes that you can add your own personal touch to in After Effects. Remember, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere templates. Those links will be available down in the description below. And remember, always be creating.